Alright everyone, it is a little after 4 o'clock in the morning, we're going to do a reaction video. And what this is, is Dallas District Attorney's Henry Wade's November 24th, 1963 press conference, in which he goes through the evidence against Oswald, or rather the so-called evidence, as Lee himself, as he called it. Alright, we're going to jump right into it, here it is right here. The president and ben Shout out to David Von Pine, my friend David Von Pine, for uploading this. Very good researcher. Very good. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. It's just two days after the assassination. Come on. Okay. Come on. The purpose of this news conference is to detail some of the evidence against Oswald for the assassination of the president. This evidence was gathered by largely by the Dallas police who did an excellent job on this with the help of some of the federal agencies. And I'm going through the evidence piece by piece uh, for you. Number one, as some of this will, you will already know, some of it you won't, I don't think. Uh, as, a, as all of you do know, first, there was a number, we have a number of witnesses that saw the person with the gun on the sixth floor of the bookstore building, the window detailing the window where he was looking out. Inside this window, the police found a row of... Okay, so um, that's the first point. By the... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so that's the first point. So that is true. There were ten, about ten people who saw a rifle sticking out either a rifle sticking out the window or a just a man in the window okay now of course there was a shooter in that window okay but you know there was a shooter in that window I don't think anyone disputes that so that doesn't mean it was Oswald though cases here's the second the point please found a row of books, cases, boxes, hiding someone sitting in the window from people on the same floor looking in. Uh, so even uh, Warren Commission counsel David Bellin wrote in his book, and um, did the Warren Report concede this or no? I'll have to look back. But, uh, you know, it's universally written that the shield, the "Quote unquote shield of boxes was built by the by the shooter in the window, but actually they were already there because there was construction, or there was working going on in that area. So it was just a convenience that that was there around that window. So no, that shield of box quote unquote shield of boxes was already there prior to." On the window was some boxes where in the little circle around the window by the bookcases, some boxes where apparently the person was sitting because he was seen from that particular window. On this box that the... Was a crease. There was actually a crease in the box where the rifle lay across. I don't think that gets a lot of, just a lot of talk. Uh, Mooney saw that. Defendant was sitting on, his palm print was brown and was identified as his. The three ejected shells. I love to get the video from um, my good friend, researcher Pat Spear. He completely dripped to shreds and to book, you know, really stuck a spear in the heart of that whole supposed 
supposed palm, supposed uh, handprint on the box, and he just goes through it point by point, just to, you know, drives a stake through stake through the heart, stake knife through the heart of that. So I'll have to upload that. I'll have to get permission to upload that because I was I was in the audience when he presented that, and I was like, wow. And even so, even, you know, if you want to just throw that out, which you can't, but even, even if he did, you know, he worked in the building, so his prints are all over the place. He, you know, his prints are, his prints are all over the place, but anyway, shout out to my friend Pat Spear, he just totally debunked that, it was incredible, I was like, wow. In fact, Sherry Feaster, the late Sherry Feaster, she actually got up on stage, she, after his presentation, she went up on stage, and she was, she was, like, like oh, like oh, like me, blown away. She was like, she said something like, if I remember, if I recall, Pat, you've done it, you've done it. Like you know, you just, it was just, it was that good. So, I'll have to upload that one day. Were found right by the box. Wait, what? Connected shells. Okay. And was identified as his. <coughs> the three ejected shells were found right by the box. The... Okay, so those shells, um... Actually, in the original inventory, there's actually originally only two shells were entered. And people have, you know, tried to explain that away. Saying, you know, but, um... No. Originally, there were originally two. Now, those three shells were... fired in and ejected from the Manlicker, Manlicker Carcano. That is true. I don't think anyone, no one disagrees with that. But um, that does not mean it was Oswald. That just means someone was using that gun in that window, whoever that shooter was. So uh, so far, he has not pointed anything at Oswald yet. All he's proven, all he's proven so far is, a, is that there was a shooter in a, in that window, which there was. Shells were of an odd caliber of the type and later determined the gun that was found on the floor. The gun was hidden on this same floor behind some boxes uh, and uh, some bookcases. It, as I think you know, have, has been identified as having been purchased last March by the Oswald from a mail order house by and through a through an assumed name named Hydell, mailed to a post office box here in Dallas. On his person was... So, so you know, um, um, John, the researcher John Armstrong, he, you know, pretty much demolishes, he pretty much proves, apparently proves that, you know, Oswald did not and could not have ordered that rifle as well as Jim DiGenio he's also shown that um, but very interestingly my fr my late friend and mentor Mr. David Lifton he actually believed he told me that he believed that Oswald did order the rifle through the mail so I'm very personally me personally I'm on the fence about whether Oswald ordered ordered the the rifle or not because on one hand, John Armstrong and DiGenio is very convincing, and then we have David Lifton, who studied Oswald more than anyone, who said, he, who said no, I believe that Oswald uh, ordered the rifle. So, um, that's really the only thing I'm on the fence about, but um, you know, they both make very good points. Pocketbook in but pocket. no matter what, that does not mean he killed the president, even if he did order the rifle. Was identification card with the same name and post office box on it. Pictures were found of the defendant with this gun and a pistol on his, in his holster. Immediately that morning, it is unusual, but that morning a neighbor brought the... You want to say, say, who cares? It's just him holding, who cares? Who cares? That doesn't mean he shot the president. Oswald from Irving, Texas. Well, hold on, what? Neighbor brought the Oswald from Irving, Texas. He usually brought him on Monday morning, I think, but this day he went home one day early on Thursday night 
and came back uh, to uh, with this fellow. And when he came back, he had to talk about Bill Frazier now. A package under his arm uh, that he said was one to curtains, I believe, or one to shades. Uh, Curtain rods. The wife had said he had the gun the night before. It was missing that morning after he left. Okay, so as I've said numerous times, all anyone has to do is read the... Um, seriously, all anyone has to do is read the Warren, the, the subchapter called The Long and Bulky Package in the Warner Report. It's a subchapter. Read that subchapter, and anyone with a lucid mind will come away con will come away convinced that there could not have been a rifle, even broken down, inside that bag. There just could not have been. So go and read that subchapter. Okay? Just go and read it. It's a Google click away. Just read it, and you will be can come away convinced that there is that there could not have been a rifle in that bag. He got out around eight o'clock and went to the building behind some cars and went to work. Wait, what? And went to the or it was missing that morning after he left. He got out around eight o'clock and went to the building. I don't think anyone disagrees that Marinus and Ruth Payne saw that the. And the cops saw, found that the rifle was missing. I don't think anyone. I don't. Hear, I haven't heard of anyone that disagrees with that. So. And some cars and went to work. A police officer immediately after the uh, assassination ran in the building and saw this man in a corner and started to arrest him. But the manager of the building said he was an employee and was all right. Every other employee was located. It's very interesting, Liam. I was in uh, the Dallas Municipal Archives, and I was looking at, not the Dallas Municipal Archives, the, da the Dallas Library, <laughs> which has all of the uh, Dallas police files on microfilm. And, of course, it's all online, of course. Um, uh, and it actually says, there's actually a report. Let's see if I can, uh, let's see, let's see if I can find where I wrote it down, um, or what the citation is, where it actually says that, um, that ba Officer Baker stopped Oswald in the stairway, and I was like, what? <laughs> so, anyway, let's see if I can, um, find out where it is. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It is, um, the Dallas, okay, so it's box, this is referring to the Dallas, the files, the Dallas police files in the Dallas Municipal Archives, which are online, the, the citation for that is box 3, folder 14, item number 1, okay? So I just wanted to throw that out there. That, that's, when I read that, I was like, whoa, but anyway. And, and, and by the way, they time-tested it, of course, as everyone knows. Everyone says it was that Officer Baker bumped into, uh, ran to Oswald 90 seconds after the shots. But actually, if you read the testimony, it's actually 74 seconds afterwards. Okay. And, um, so, yeah. And, by the way, what, um, Oswald was seen, of course, just a few moments before the shooting in the lunchroom on the second floor between 12.15 and 12.25. At the time, the motorcade was originally scheduled to pass the book depository. This is very important. The mo because the motorcade was five minutes late. If he had shot Kennedy, he would not have been in the lunchroom where he was seen by Officer Baker 74 seconds after the murder. 
And of course, Oswald did not appear in any way suspicious to Baker, who talked to him and went on. So, so we have witnesses who saw Oswald on in the lunchroom, while at the time, also when witnesses outside saw a man with a scoped rifle in in the window. So that, I mean, how hard is it, folks? It wasn't him. It wasn't him. But this defendant of the company, a description and name of him went out by police to look for him. The next we hear of him... And by the way, this was written up well in JFK and the Unspeakable, you know, how uh, Howard Brennan could not have provided the description to the police. So who put that out that skit that uh the description of him? Who put that out? That's a mystery. Hold on, let's rewind. It was located but this defendant. Hold on. But the manager of the building said he was an employee and was all right. Every other employee was located but this defendant of the company. Okay, so absolutely not Absolutely not. Um, uh, he's, this is a common talking point that is repeated even to this day. That Oswald was the only employee missing from the depository after, um, after the shot, you know, after the shots. But no, 17 people were never in the building after 1230. And that comes from all the statements of the Texas... All, and that comes from the statements of all the book depository witnesses. And you can find that um, in the Warren Commission, Volume 22, pages 632 to 686. 17 people were not in the building after 1230. 17. And then they say, well, well uh, and then people try to weasel away around him. They'd be like, well, Oswald was the only... Warehouse but not working. No, he wasn't. Charles Gibbons was also missing. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Wow. So far, we're only four minutes and thirty-six minutes in, and this is just this is the case is just falling apart. <clears throat> and people say, you know, oh, they would have they would have gotten a, a conviction in a, just a couple days. Them Dallas police. No. 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 You know what? Actually, I take that back. I think they would have got a conviction, but based on, like, a rigged and speedy trial. Just like with Sirhan. You know, because the case of Sirhan was overwhelming that he couldn't have fired the fatal shot. But what did they do? They had a, a hasty and rigged trial, and he was just thrown in jail, and he's been there ever since. So, yes, if, if the Kennedy case had gone to court... And it was, and it was an honest trial. Then Oswald would have been found not guilty. But of course, given the times and the circumstances, like Sirhan, they would have just had a very speedy, hasty, rigged trial, and they then he would have been found guilty, and then um, he would have gotten the electric chair, and that would have been the last that we would have heard of him. But anyway, yeah, wow, we're already a couple points in. This case is just falling apart. This doesn't hold up at all, and we've learned so much more since November tour, since 1963. We've come such a long way. A description and name of him went out by police. Okay, we talked about that. Oh. Hold on. The next we hear of him is on a bus, where he got on a bus at Lamar Street, told the bus driver the president had been shot. The president told a lady... Who, all this is verified by statements that told a lady on the bus that uh, the president had been shot and said how did he know and he says the man back there told him went back to talk to him the defendant said yes he's been shot and laughed very loud so that had, so that was later found out to not be Oswald that was uh, someone else it was revealed to have not been Oswald it was someone else Okay. Uh, a 
lady. He then... By the way, the bus, dri the bus driver, um, after he gave a statement, sure enough, like, next day or so, who gets, um, this guy boards the bus, not Oswald, of course, and, um, he says, oh, wait a minute, it was that person who came on, it wasn't Oswald at all, so Oswald, but, um, but then yeah, he said it was Mil a guy named Milton Jones, not Oswald, but we do have, um, um, but I'm willing to concede that Oswald was on the bus, so, because his former landlady saw him. Well, she also hate, hated him as well. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, my friend David, again, my friend David Lifton believes he boarded the bus and the cab. So I have to agree with, uh, with that. The bus, he asked the bus driver to stop, got off at a stop, called a taxi cab driver. In Oak Cliff. Uh, I don't have the exact place and went to his home in Oak Cliff, changed his clothes hurriedly and left. As he left, uh... Yeah, he's right. Oswald did say he changed his clothes. And he did, once it was all analyzed later. Three witnesses saw a police officer, Officer Tippett, motion to him or say something to him. He walked up to the car. Three witnesses. Um, Markham and Scoggins? That has to be who he... Um, that has to be who he's... Um, referring to but actually in Scoggins's original uh, report to the FBI uh, Warren Commission document CD5 page 74 it, ac it actually says this um, at the time he got out his lunch he Scoggins saw a policeman in a squad car going east on 10th Street at a slow rate of speed. This officer stopped on 10th Street just east of Patton. Okay, the officer got out of his car and apparently said something to the man walking west on 10th Street who was on the south side of 10th Street. When the officer spoke to him, the man stopped walking. So that's amazing. If true, if Scoggins' original account here is true, then that means that Tippett got out of his car and stopped the guy walking. So that that could place the, the Tippett murder in a whole new light, if true. And this report is not mentioned in the Warren Report or its 26 volumes. But anyway, go, 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 but anyway that's just a little side note. Uh, Henry Wade said here that three witnesses saw... Um, no, by their affidavit... No, by their affidavits, that would only be... Markham and Scoggins, who saw Tippett pull over to the curb. So I'm not sure why he said three. So Tippett, Tippett Let's rewind. saw a police officer, Officer Tippett, motion to him or say something to him. He walked up to the car. Officer Tippett stepped out of the car and started around it. He shot him three times and killed him. Well, in front of the he actually saw him four times. Shot him four times. No, it's not in front of the boarding house. I don't have the exact. It's more than a block. It's a block or two. Wow, well, he doesn't know where where Tippett was shot. Oh, wow, that's cool. I mean, doesn't know. I don't know where he shot. Again, this case was dropped right. You know, this on this day when Ken when Oswald was killed. So, but anyway. Um, a block away? Hell no. It was a mile away that he was killed. A mile away. Yeah. Come on, brother. He was on foot. Hold and on. I don't have the exact. It's more than a block. It's a block or two. Was he nope. On foot yes, he was on foot. And apparently headed to the Texas Theater. He then walked across... Oh, wow. He was headed to the Texas Theater. Oh, wow. Headed to the Texas Theater. Wow. Wow. He actually said it. Oswald was headed to the Texas Theater. Wow. Not that he just ducked in for convenience. No, he was headed to the Texas. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. 
what's more likely, Oswald just walking aimlessly through the neighborhood? Which no one saw him walking on that route. Or Oswald gets in a, his last scene in front of his house at the curb. Gets into a car. Someone picks him up and drives a straight line two and a half minutes to the Texas, to the um, corner of Jefferson where he gets out and goes in, into the Texas theater to meet someone, obviously. Because when he's in there, he's go, he's bumping around seat to seat looking for somebody. So yeah, I agree with Henry Witter. Yeah, he, yeah, he was on his way to the Texas theater. He sure was. Vacant lot with the theater. He then walked across a vacant lot. Witnesses saw him eject the shell from the revolver and place. The he the kill the killer did not eject shells by the little, by the little service station where the jacket was found. No, the killer ejected shells on the corner of. 10th and Patton and on um, on Patton Avenue and 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 um, yes the gun from the revolver and place reload the gun someone saw him going to Texas theater a search was made of that later by a number of police officers Texas the they make it sound like the Texas theater is like right there no it's blocks away Many blocks away. Reload the gun. Someone saw him going to Texas Theater. A search was made of that later by a number of police officers. At the time, an officer of the Dallas police spotted him and asked him to come out. Uh, he struck at the officer, put the gun against his head, and snapped it. But did not, uh, the bullet did not go off. We have the snap bullet there. Wow. Oh my God, he actually said it. Wow. Wow, he actually, this is, wow. He aimed exactly what McDonald already said. Oswald pulled the pistol out, aimed it at McDonald. At this, this point, he aimed it at his head. Pulled the trigger. And it snapped. Wow. Wow. Now this was before they ch they completely changed it all around and said, "Oh, he stuck his hand in and he grabbed the cylinder and the hammer and the hammer struck the the fleshy part of his hand." No. This this was the original story, folks. Original story. Oswald pulled his pistol, aimed it at Officer McDonald, and it snapped. So if it if it, if the gun didn't work in the theater, how are we supposed to believe it? How are we supposed to believe that it worked thirty minutes earlier to kill Officer Tippett? This is the crux of the case, folks. Let's hear that one more time. Uh, gun against his head to come out. Uh, he struck at the officer, put the gun against his head, and snapped it. But did not, uh, the bullet did not go off. We have the snap bullet there. Officers. Officer I mean, there it is, folks. I mean, there it is. We subdued him at that time. Was that an attempt suicide, sir? Against the officer's head. You know why the gun didn't McDonald go was his name. <laughs> it snapped. It was a misfire. Yep, there it is. Wow. Well, that's cool. He's saying it. There it is, folks. The gun misfired. Yep. And it wasn't... It wasn't just... So many, so many people heard the snap. Officer Hudson heard the snap. Officer Walker heard the snap. Um... Officer Hawkins heard the snap. There was mm, a witness by the name of John Gibson. He heard the snap. George um, Applin, he, Applin, he heard the snap. 
so, and, and the war report tried to spin this by uh, on um, page 179 of the report by saying, quote, well, they might have heard a snapping noise resulting from the police officer grabbing the cylinder of the revolver, of the revolver and pulling it away from Oswald. But no, no, that would be after, that would be like much, several second, seconds later. No, several seconds later, no. The original story, Oswald pulled his revolver, aimed it, pulled the trigger, snap. And, and, but that, and the officer McDonald reported a uh, volume 24, page 243, quote, the primer of one round was dented on misfire at the time of the struggle with the suspect. Officer, um, FBI agent Bob Barrett reported, CD5, page 85, I was, sh I was also shown the six cartridges taken from the weapon and, and noted that one of them had an indentation on the primer. Bob Carroll, Detective Bob Carroll, who gra who um, eventually yanked the pistol from Oswald, he testified, volume 7, page 23, quote, I looked at, I looked at it and I could see what looked to me like, like a hammer might have fallen on it, just a real light uh, indent. Officer Hawkins testified, quote, I looked at them and one of them appeared to have a small indentation where it looked like it might have been struck and did not fire. That was volume 7, page 96. And then volume 24, page 239, Sergeant Jerry Hill, who was there, of course. Oh, oh, sorry. All these people are there, obviously. He said, quote, one of the shells had a hammer mark on the primer. And this is, and, uh, and then CD1, page 10. This is the FBI's, FBI summary report, quote, quote, an examination of the gun confirmed that one of the six cartridges taken from the weapon had a hammer indentation of the primer, but did but had not fired. End quote. And then Officer McDonald was going around that weekend. He was proudly going around the police station, proudly displaying this bullet which had a dented primer, and he was like, "Look how close I came from getting killed." So if the gun didn't work in the theater, how are we supposed to believe that it worked to kill Tippett? That's the crux of the matter. And then by the time the Warren report comes along and people are testifying, they got um, FBI expert Courtney Cunningham. He testified, oh, well, uh, uh, there's a small nick, an indentation, up near the edge of the primer, but um, but he concluded it, it wasn't for... it. <laughs> he oddly concluded it wasn't from the hammer because, quote, well, it's not in the center of the primer. But this re restricts the options and ignores the possibility that the firing pin was misaligned. And this brings us up to the allegations, of, of course, that the FBI had to straighten the firing pin a little bit on Oswald's pistol to make it work so they could test it. All right? And, and of course, um, again, okay? And Cunningham additionally testified quote, a microscopic examination of that nick gave no ind gave no indication that it was made by a firing pin, end quote. That's volume 3, page 460. So, I guess that's the end of that. Guess that's the end of that. I, m I mean, you know, all this evidence, and then um, the Warren Report has this expert and says, oh, well, when I saw it, it doesn't look like a hammer indentation. So, I don't know. I, I guess that's the end of it. I'm convinced. Oh, wait, no. That's not not how this thing works. So, I say Cunningham might have been paid or manipulated to just make that claim. Because nothing will ever, ever change the fact that Oswald aimed his pistol at McDonald, pulled the trigger, and it snapped. So once again, the question remains, if it didn't go off in the theater, why should we believe it went off for Tippett? Uh, then uh, officers subdued him, some six officers subdued him there in the theater, and he was brought to the police station here. Mr. Wade, why didn't the gun fire? 
it missed the firing pin on the pull, on the, it, uh, the, the, the shell didn't explode. The it, they have the word hit it, but didn't explode. No, well, well, there, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Henry Wade. The, uh, it was one officer who said that he pulled the trigger, but he managed to put his thumb in the, in the, uh, in the before the firing pin, and it didn't, uh, well, it didn't uh, strike the, uh, the bullet, but it really exploded out. Is that? I don't know the deep, I don't know, I know he did snap the gun, that's all I know well, about. We can say it was a misfire. It was, it didn't, it didn't fire. <coughs> Go ahead, you got more evidence this, right? One other answer. Let's get the story. Let's see. Uh, by the way, the, no point. You know, the, they later changed. Like I said, they later changed it. Officer McDonald later, later changed the story and said, "No, during uh, I grabbed the gun, put again, put my little fleshy part in between my thumb and my finger, in, in between the hammer, so that it wouldn't go off." If that happens, you're going to know that, it ha that that happens. He never said, boy, is my hand sore. No, it didn't happen. That was something that was made up to try and totally er historically erase the fact that, that Oswald pulled, his, pulled the trigger and it snapped. No. Can't get away from what actually happened. His fingerprints were found on the gun. Have I said that? And yeah, it's really funny. Whenever you inform Hello Nutters that Officer McDonald did not come up with that webbing of the hand story for a full year, and also that he testified to no such thing, they're like, what? What? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. That's enough of that. Hold on. Fingerprints were... Let's see, uh... The, his fingerprints were found on the gun. Have I said that? Which gun? Which Wrong. No. There was a one... <coughs> there was um, uh, some fingerprints on the uh, trigger guard of the rifle. But um, Lieutenant Day... Uh, let's see what the... You know what? I... I'm not even going to say it. Okay. Here's it. It's right from the Warner Report. The Warner Report claimed that the rifle was, quote, examined by Lieutenant J.C. Day of the Identification Bureau of the Dallas Police. He applied fingerprint powder to the side of the metal housing near the trigger and noticed traces of two prints. Okay, okay. That was a... This is a... One, that was page 122 to 123 of the Warner Report. And then, for some reason, we have to go over like 400 pages to finally get the answer to, to what the outcome was. Okay, this is page 566 of the Warren Report. The results of those prints? Quote, the faint ridge form formations were insufficient for purposes of affecting an identification. I mean, uh, there it is right there in the Warren Report. There we go. And uh, as, as far as, um, there was also a palm print um, on the rifle. Uh, but, but the only person to see this print, allegedly, Lieutenant Day, he said it was an old print. So we have, so what do we have? We have uh, faint fingerprints that are insufficient for identification and we have a palm print that is an old palm print an old palm print well, not not really good evidence huh on the rifle uh, what about the paraffin test yes I have gone in that the paraffin test showed that he had uh, recently fired a gun it was on both hands both hands. Both hands. Wait, what? He fired a gun. Yes, I haven't gone in that. The captain test showed that he had uh, recently fired a gun. It was on both hands. On both hands. Both hands. No, okay, so, um, wait, what? A gun. The rifle fingerprints were his. No, all that proves is that Oswald might have fired a pistol. But, 
as a, um, but this is by no means certain because you can get nitrates on your hand from a book, from cardboard, uh, from a newspaper, which is what Oswald was seen reading that day. So no, and it's very, very, very faint traces on his hands of nitrates, which helps support that hypothesis. But um, but no, but but, but what he omitted. It actually probably hasn't even taken place yet since this is the 24th, but the FBI got, took Oswald's rifle and they shot it over and over and over. And every single time the shoot, they, um, the person firing it got nitrates on their face. You cannot fire that weapon and not get nitrates on your face. Okay? So that proves, that proves, that proves that Oswald did not fire a weapon so really we can, like I said in the past you can just stop there if you want that's all anyone really needs to know that's truly all anyone really needs to know that the official story of a lone gunman doesn't work and then people say oh, uh, but then lone nutters say but wait Corlin Cunningham told the Warren Commission you can't um, you, you can get no nitrates on the cheek. Well, if you actually read what he said, <laughs> it's pretty humorous. So, Courtney Cunningham testified on page, on uh, volume three, page 494, quote, another man, quote, another man and I, we cleaned off the rifle, I loaded it for him, he held it in one of the cleaned areas, and I pushed the clip in, so he would not have to get his hands near the chamber. In other words, so he wouldn't pick up residues from it, or from the action, or from the receiver. And only, and then, when we ran the casts, we got no reaction on either hand or cheek. End quote. <laughs> so, so, so the, the only way that you can not get nitrates, if someone is holding the clip for you and everything, but wait a minute, as someone once said, if, if Oswald's hold, firing, if Oswald's standing there, someone's holding the clip, that, may, that means two people, and therefore a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> no. But no. It didn't happen. It didn't happen, okay? Oswald had no nitrates on his cheek, on his, on his face, so therefore he could not have fired a, a, a weapon. And then people quote Corlin Cunningham next in his testimony, where he then says, Well, well, you know... I would not expect uh, nitrates to get on uh, the the shooter's face because the um, because it's um, because uh, the nitrate you know it's encased in the gun and everything and it wouldn't go back on the face and everything. But no, and low nutters just quote that and they're like, well, there you go. But no, all their tests showed. His own tests showed that every single time they fired the weapon, they got nitrates on their face. So he just lied when he said that. He just lied. You can't, one can't simply say that I would not expect the, the, it to fly back and get nitrates on your face because it's tightly encased in the gun when your own experiments show that that's exactly what happened. So low nutters, they, you cannot use that argument. You cannot do that. This is insane. It's insane. Insane. Okay. Yeah, okay. So here is a uh, page 561 of the Warren Report, which quotes Cunningham's testimony. Quote, I, well, I personally wouldn't expect to find any residues on a person's right cheek after firing a rifle, after firing the rifle, due to the fact that by the very principles and the manufacture of the action, the cartridge itself, um, due to the fact that by the very principles and the manufacturer and the action, the cartridge, uh, because the cartridge itself is sealed into the chamber by the bolt being closed behind it. And upon firing the case, the cartridge case expands into the chamber 
filling it up and sealing it off from the gases so none will come back in your face and so by its very nature I would not expect to find residue on the right cheek of a shooter end quote well there you go I mean uh he says it I mean uh there I I'm convinced he says it it's right there in the Warner, in the Warner port so therefore Oswald not having residues on his cheek it proved there you go that's why he didn't get residues on his cheek Oh, wait a minute. His his own tests, this guy's own tests, show that that's exactly what did not happen. The residue went back. Every single one of his tests, the residue came back and got on their face. That's amazing. Wow. Absolutely amazing. What a sham. Yes, sir. Were there any fingerprints? Tom, friend. Ran the fingerprints. Were there any fingerprints at the window? Tom, friend. Were the fingerprints on the gun? Wait, hold on. Let's rewind. Both hands. A gun. A gun. The rifle fingerprints were in the rifle. Yes, sir. Were there any fingerprints? Tom, friend. Ran the fingerprints. Were there any fingerprints at the window? Tom, friend. Were the fingerprints on the gun? Yes, on the gun. Where on the gun? Yes, sir. Where on the gun? Under the... On part of the metal under the gun. Did he still ever say anything about it? Admit anything at all? He never did admit, admit any of the killing. Now I didn't. Uh, you asked me this. I didn't do any interrogation. Well, I thought maybe you listed that as part of a, the part of the evidence. No, it's not did he listed. Display here. any animosity towards the president? Any conversation with any officers? He was bitter toward all of the officers that examined him. Is what I've been told. Sir, Would you continue, sir? And move I don't believe that. For... Really? Uh, D Detective Jim Lavelle um, said he always said, you know, Oswald was very Lee was always polite. You know, when he talked, when he when he was being when he was being interrogated, he wasn't you know arrogant or anything. Like, no, he's just you know answering his questions very polite and everything. So, where Henry Wade and says this, I have no idea. And just yeah, I was reading. That. Let's finish the... We have, uh, and, uh, that's about all. What about uh, ballistics? Ballistics test, anyway. Well, I said this was the gun that, uh... Killed the president? Yes. Is that the FBI report? The leverage of the FBI? He doesn't know whether that's the gun. All he knows is that that was one of the guns used in the assassination. I'm not liberty to go into the FBI, FBI report. Did you say the gun was mailed to a post office box in Dallas in March? March of this year. Was he living in Dallas then? Yes, uh, presumably he was. He got it here. Previously, he lived in New Orleans. He said he'd only been here two months. So that's pretty much the evidence, which we've debunked. So let's see where this just goes. I might just end it in a second, but let's see where this thing goes. He came to he came to Fort Worth sometime in the fall of '62, and then moved here a while, and apparently went to New Orleans for a while came back. Now, when the period of that is, I'm not sure. Mr. Wade, what was the evidence that we were told was uh, startling evidence that uh, could not be told to the press uh, Saturday morning? Saturday morning. They said it came in Saturday morning and that could not be revealed. It was uh, uh, I'm not, physical evidence. I don't know. Uh, that wasn't me that said that. I don't Have know. Have you given us everything? That I've given you everything that I... Do you know that he has been recognized as a patron of Ruby's nightclub here? I don't know that. Do you know of any connection between Mr. Ruby and the... I know of no. Are you investigating reports that he might have been slain because Ruby might have feared he would implicate him in something? The police are making... It's pretty sad. Um, if you read if you read Joseph McBride's book, Into the Nightmare, um, this is from his book, quote, Former DA Henry Wade made no bones to me about the Tippett case not being a priority after Oswald's death, comma at least from the point of view of the DA's office. Wade admitted, quote, We never worked any on his murder. Wow. We never worked any on his murder. Wow, that's, that's insane. Not even a 21 gun salute was given at Tippett's funeral. Not even a flag was given to his widow. It's, it's just really a shame. This. Ugh. 
It's really sickening how this this murder of a police officer was not investigated at all. And even in uh, Jim Lavelle t also told Joseph McBride, "quote In reality, his death was his death was completely removed from the president's deal." End quote. What a shame. Investigation of that murder. I don't know anything about the death. The police are making the investigation of that murder. I don't know anything about what. He did something. Investigating reports that he might have been slain because Ruby might have feared he would implicate him in something. The police are making the investigation of that murder. I don't know anything about the death. Is the investigation although charges have been filed it will be presented another thing from joseph mcbride's book he also writes in this book quote during my interview with henry wade he cryptically he said cryptically quote somebody reported to me that the police already knew who he was and they were looking for him end quote i read that and i was like whoa what so it if true, that could place everything in a whole new light. It's very interesting. Grand jury on Reuben uh, will prop immediately within the next week, and it'll probably be tried around the middle of January. As the district attorney's office follows this investigation of the assassination of the president, before sending the gun to Washington? Before. Before sending the gun to Washington. Yes. Do, you, do you think it was unusual for Jack Ruby to be in that crowd? I don't pass on that. Uh, Unusual for being that crowd. The reports that has been. Well, I was. I haven't been here since last night, so I don't know anything about. Mr. Wade, <laughs> how do you feel about not being able to try? That's, a, that's not. That's what I'm going. That what I need. What I need to investigate later is how did Ruby get into that basement? Because that's very important. It's the killer of the president. Well, uh, we will try Ruby and ask death penalty on him. Officer Vaughn said, quote, on his, on his deathbed, as a dying declaration, that son of a bitch Ruby never came down that ramp. And even the House of Representatives, they concluded, they concluded that Ruby came in, he entered in through a different way from the alley. So that's what I, this, I need to investigate all of that in detail. Pretty one of these days, pretty soon. About the same time. Well, how about you? The, I don't want to go into why I was aware for words on anything. Has your office closed its investigation into the death of President Kennedy? No, sir. The investigation uh, will continue on that with a basis toward, uh, and we have no concrete evidence that anyone assisted him in this. But the investigation, I'm sure, will go oh. on with reference to any possible accomplice or people. Again, this is November 24th. We. Uh, when people, when we barely know anything, so. Do you have a suspicion now that there were? I have no uh, concrete evidence or suspicions at present. Thank you. Would you be willing to say, uh, with, with all this evidence, uh, that uh, it is now beyond a reasonable doubt at all that uh, that uh, Oswald was the killer of President Kennedy? I would say that without any doubt, he's the killer. The law says beyond a reasonable doubt and to a moral certainty, which I have there's no question that he was the killer of President Kennedy. That case is closed. Again, we just fact check this whole thing. As far as I was concerned. Yes. What did you... Wait, will we be able to... Uh, have... Funny how he's not mentioning all the, all the police reports that he has of gunfire from the front. It's very interesting. He didn't mention that. Copies of the photographs showing Oswald. If you have them, you'll have to get them from the Dallas police. What do you think was the motive of Ruby? I don't know. I haven't talked with him. What do you feel is the strongest evidence in that list? Well, it's like any case based on a series of circumstances. They all have to fit together. Yeah. You put a man in the window with a gun. People cannot positively identify him from the ground. He fits their general description. Oh, really? You have his fingerprint identify him. And in the window with a gun, people cannot positively identify him from the ground. He oh, people cannot positively identify him from the ground. Oh, oh, this is so beautiful. Wow. Their general description. 
You have his fingerprints there. You have the shells there. You have his gun that he purchased. What you do with the Oswald's order? Don't can't ask that. We found a fluctuation in Oswald's bank account or his finances. I know not, know nothing about. He didn't say anything about how the bullets from Tippett's body didn't match the gun. He didn't say that. Yes, sir. Both of them. That was found by the Dallas police. I just, search I just explained there were no fingerprints. They were co-workers that left him there around 12 o'clock to eat lunch. Building, now, I didn't mention that. The witnesses put him on the fourth floor at 12 o'clock and shortly thereafter. No, on the fourth floor. Oh, that's awesome. Not the sixth floor? That's cool. I mean the sixth floor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where the box is. What did you say, the ballistics? Uh, I missed the part about that. That's actually been determined, you know, that's actually been determined to not be to not be the case. That's all been, if you look at original testimony and stuff like that, that's been shown not to be the case. This was the gun, the bullet from this gun killed the president. What was the gun from the said, what? That, This was the gun, the bullet from this gun killed the president. Wait, what? Ballistics. Uh, I mean, the sixth floor. Where the, box is. where the box is. What did you say, the ballistics? Uh, I missed part about the that, ballistics test. This was the gun, the bullet from this gun killed the president. <laughs> what was the gun from the FBI, sir? I, I can't go into anything from the FBI. Wait, have you heard the story that Oswald and Ruby were previously appointed? I think I heard it on radio or something, but I don't know anything about it. Do we have a chance to talk to Ruby? I have not talked with Okay. No, sir, I've not talked with either one of them. Well, what, will, will we get a chance to talk to them? I don't know anything about that. Did you know Ruby? Uh, this was entirely about going over the evidence. I thought some of you would want. Did you know Ruby before this? No, sir. Saw so him in this very same room Friday night when we had the defendant up here. You threw a steak party for the Texas Bar Association in the Adolphus Hotel. Were you there? No, sir, I wasn't there. As a matter of fact, some of... Oh, excuse me. If some of you will recall, he asked a question from out here in the audience, or answered a question. He's standing right back here, and I didn't know who he was. I thought he was a member of the press, play for Cuba, and he Canadian. told me as we walked out of here that he was a nightclub operator here. What question did he ask? What? What question did he ask? I don't remember, but he... The answer one. I Maybe mean, it was an answer, but he said something. I was... You remember it was Friday night when I asked you to do an interview with me on the phone, and you had another call, and, and Ruby was hanging around in the background. You were on the phone, and I said, uh, and, I, and then you had to uh, go away, and I, and I asked Ruby, uh, because he seemed to me like a detective. He seemed to be all over this place. I said, would you see if you could get him on the phone? It might have been where he told me who he was. I didn't know who he was either when he, uh, I think someone here answered that question in that he answered a question. Somebody asked something and he answered it back there. I don't know what it was. I think it was some question about a street or an address or a name or something. You look to me like your good friend. I don't know. <laughs> uh, do you feel that list is complete? Or anything is withheld by your uh, government agencies? Federal this is all that I know of. That's all you know. Yes. After in this case, what would you use as a theory of as to his motive? Again, a question about his motive. Well, of course, that has to develop. You have to develop that from all of the evidence. And uh, I can't go into motive. Uh, uh, it depends on what you get in evidence. If you get everything that's been written in the papers in evidence, you could put a pretty good motive there. But I don't, a lot of that I don't think would be admissible. What can you tell and us? And you've got to base your motive on what you have before the jury. What can you tell us so far about your investigation of uh, Jack Ruby? I haven't uh, had anything to do with it. I was, I haven't, uh, uh, no, I know nothing about it. Will you Justice. be involved? I will try. Is the Justice, is the Justice Department heading up that investigation? As far as I know, the Dallas police is. How would you evaluate the work of the Dallas police in investigating the death of the president? I think the Dallas police did an excellent job on this, and before midnight on when he was killed, uh, had the man in custody and had sufficient evidence, what I think, to convict him. Mr. Wilson, you identified the gun positively as the one that was purchased for this and the gun here. It can be positively identified. Uh, serial number. Serial number. Serial number. And both that and on the scope too. Oh, the, oh, the scope. 
Scope no, the scope was on the gun, but of course a different person makes it, a different company makes the scope. Did he buy, when he bought the gun, did he buy the gun with the scope, scope and the unit? The scope was on it when it was purchased. Do you know what kind of gun it was? I don't have the exact, it was a foreign made gun of a. It's a six five tenths millimeter, and I understand it's a used gun of uh, Italian make, probably. But you see that. It was mounted, as I understand it, when it came. Do you see that the easy availability of guns such as this uh, requires new and more stringent laws? That is an old question that's been off. Uh, uh, it's obvious you didn't have any guns. You probably wouldn't have any murders with guns. Uh, but it's nearly impossible to keep a person who wants to kill from finding a gun somewhere. Do you know Oswald's activities nine or ten days ago? I never heard of him until he was arrested and brought in here. Mr. Wade, the State Department put out a piece of information in Washington. We debated the importance of telling this evidence to the American people to a situation developing in Russia. And the Russian Marxists uh, mentioned the relation to uh, Oswald's background. Can you tell us anything in your evidence that's related to a Marxist background? No, sir, I can't. There's some uh, uh, things found on him, like newspapers and things that per didn't necessarily connect him with the organization, like uh, Communist Daily Worker or something. I don't think you can necessarily say. So this was, is just going on. Uh, so, in fact, he read it. By the way, necessarily mean that he, uh, he couldn't prove. Silence from me does not mean that I uh, agree with everything. I'm just, I'm just chilling right here. Long to him. I've read. Uh, quite a bit about this subject. I don't know what you're talking about, but I've read interviews from reporters from over in Russia all on this subject that uh, apparently they know quite a bit more about than I do. Was there material found here related to the case? There's, there's, no, there's no material that said he belonged to any uh, group other than this fair play for Cuba that I know of. Nothing found in the room There's lots of material dealing with that movement found. Henry, this. Huh. Ever able to ascertain whether he went to Washington and took part in the uh, House of American Activities Committee riots? Uh, I know nothing about that. It's, I don't think he told anybody he was, and I don't know of any. Not to my knowledge. Now, I assume someone has been trying to check that, but I don't know anything on that. So. Did Ruby do that? Uh, were you answering about Ruby or no, this about was Oswald? A, this about Oswald, wasn't it? I don't know of anything on either one of them up there, for that matter. I believe that's about it. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Mr. Wade, I'd like to ask one more question. Why did you install this in the Why did you go over the term? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Probably the main one, I received a call from Paris, France, and Stockholm, Sweden, and nearly every foreign country asking me about this evidence, and I thought from... There's newsmen in those countries. Did Robert Kennedy or anyone from his office? I've heard nothing from any of the, from Washington or any of the officials in this country on this matter. But I decided that uh, I've heard, I've had a number of newsmen call me from all over the world, wanting to know why it wasn't, and I thought, okay. just my own mind decided it was a good idea. Are, no. you, me. Yes. are you aware that the Justice Department, before you made this announcement and before you came into the building tonight, had said that a new evidence or the evidence would all be released and given to newsmen? No, sir, I'm not familiar with that other than uh, as I walked out the door, one of the, one of the, your men, I think, called me and told me that uh, there was something on that that they were considering that. But I was already had this up and was coming out to see. And that had nothing to do with me getting this ready. Is there, is, there, is there any doubt in your mind that if Oswald was tried, that you would have had him convicted by a jury? With the evidence you had? I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that we'd have convicted him, but of course, you, you never know what. Uh, we've had lots of people we thought that, that somebody might hang the jury or something, but there's no question. Well, as far as you're mind. concerned, the evidence you gave us, you, you could have convicted him. I've sent people to the electric chair on less. This was more than enough. Though. Yes. Will you seek the death penalty for Ruby? Yes. Even if he pleads guilty? Yes. 
Is it an automatic death penalty? Does the FBI have additional evidence? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not... I don't know what they have. Sir, do you know when you'll present the Ruby case to the Yeah. Within a week, I said. I might say on this that uh, you asked about the penalty on it. This latter, this latter case was an assassination of a man under arrest, handcuffed, that to me is a very aggravated case and warrants death penalty. Thank you. you a second assassination doesn't help a first. Do you have a signed statement for Mr. Ruby? I haven't seen it, but I think they have. Are you investigating the possibility that Ruby might have killed Oswald because he feared Oswald might implicate him in some way? I'm not investigating anything. I will try whatever. I'll try the case. Concerning the Oswald evidence, Mr. Wade, is there any one single uh, portion of that that you consider most important? Well... The gun being his and the gun that killed him, his fingerprints on him, his fingerprints for the window make out a pretty good case. His flight also is important. It's like one of these things, uh, you can't just go and say this one thing will convict him. On any case based on circumstantial evidence, it has to, all the circumstances have to point to the guilt and exclude every other reasonable hypothesis, which we, I think all of them will. The combination of that uh, fills the bill. Yes, sir. I think he's already been for the JP, hasn't he? I think he was taken for the JP. The JP was here today, I know. He called me. Now, if they haven't examined the trial, which they may get a victim, I don't know when that'll be or whether it's been set yet. Well, we're prepared to go now, and but it'll probably be Wednesday before we can. I mean, we'd sort of set up to have the other Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday, and so we'll run this in its place. Thank you, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So this is from Wikipedia right here. Quote, as of July 2008, 15 persons convicted during Wade's term as Dallas County District Attorney have been exonerated of the crimes of which they were convicted in, in light of new DNA evidence because of the culture of the department to, quote, convict at all costs, end quote, more innocent people are suspected to have been falsely imprisoned. Project Innocence Texas has more than 250 cases under examination. I mean, there, there you go. There it is. All right. You be well. You all be well. God bless. And also, before I go, um, you know, this press conference actually is very important because this press conference was summarized and sent and uh, published all around the world. All these, the so-called pieces of evidence that he, all the bullet points of so-called evidence that he listed, they were all printed in the media published all around the world and um, Mark Lane wrote his famous December 19th 1963 article for the National Guardian critiquing these critiquing these points uh, no one else would publish it and uh, that article really is really what started it all and uh, Shirley Martin, first-generation researcher. So if it wasn't for that strong woman, we wouldn't have a research community. And most likely, America would still believe the Warren Report and all these points that Henry Wade just, just, just said. Had she not sent Mark Lane's 
December 1963 National Guardian article to Marguerite Oswald, Marguerite wouldn't have read it and asked Elaine to be Oswald's attorney for the Warren Commission. The rest is, as they say, history. So thank you, Mrs. Martin. You are, you are one of only a few who are true heroes of this case. After Oswald's mother read it, she contacted Lane and said, quote, You are the only lawyer in America who says there's a question about whether he did it. The rest is history. 